day. So next up, we're gonna see some more open infrastructure in demo form, so uh, fingers crossed. And to show it off, we've got uh, one of the folks that did some awesome demos back in Austin, Alex Polby from CoreOS, and Spencer Kimball from Cockroach Labs. Welcome out. Thank you, Mark. All right. Good Ooh. luck, guys. All right, thank you. Okay, so last year we, uh, let's say, opened a few minds um, showing how we can use Kubernetes to deploy OpenStack itself. Um, and this time we hope to do that again. Um, now around uh, stateful systems, particularly uh, CockroachDB, which is a cloud-native database. So before we get into this, um, Spencer, uh, why did you choose such an awful name? That's a, it's a fair question. This started as a GitHub project, and I have a kind of a, a dark sense of humor. I never thought when I named it CockroachDB that I'd have to explain myself to everyone in such a huge crowd. Uh, but I think the name stands. CockroachDB is something that replicates itself and is very hard to kill. So it lives up to its namesake. All right. So cloud native, what is, what is this? <laughs> Well, in the context of a database, I think cloud native has three important components. The first is that it's scalable horizontally and is transparent to the application. It's also an architecture that has no single points of failure. And it needs to be survivable and self-healing. OK, isn't this just NoSQL? It shares a lot of commonalities with NoSQL, but there's two crucial differentiators with CockroachDB. The first is that it's scalable SQL. And the second is that it provides multi-active availability. Uh, could you go on, please? <laughs> sure. So SQL is something everyone here is familiar with. Just by show of hands, who here in the audience has used a SQL database or deployed a SQL database? Yeah. <laughs> um, pretty much everyone. Uh, you know, SQL fell out of fashion in the last decade with the advent of NoSQL, but it's come roaring back. And it turns out that folks appreciate some of what SQL brings to the table when they're developing applications. Transactions, uh, secondary indexes that are consistent, uh, a, a standard query language that's actually quite sophisticated for doing analytics. But they also want scale. So CockroachDB is bridging that gap. All right. Uh, that's a lot of concepts. Um, even for someone in distributed systems, could you talk about uh, high or multi-active availability, I think is what you called it? Absolutely. Yes. So this is an evolution of the idea of high availability. Um, the difference is that it's always consistent. And that means that you can talk to any node in a CockroachDB cluster and read or write and always get the same correct answer. Um, this is very much, by the way, scalable SQL, multi-active availability. These, these are the technologies and the capabilities that Google Spanner technology provides. The difference with Cockroach is that it's both open source, and it's been architected in such a way that it can run just as easily on a developer's laptop as it can run in a, you know, a multi-cloud hybrid environment. All right, which brings us back to Kubernetes. Um, and so before we start showing this off, I need you to just Follow along with me on this one and, and open your mind that uh, something you may not believe, which is you can run any stateful application inside of containers and on top of Kubernetes. A lot of, well, there's been a lot of misconceptions in our space, but any application, uh, and particularly stateful applications, all work extremely well on this. So we're going to show it off. Um, all right, so here what we're doing is we're looking at the CockroachDB administrative dashboard. There's three nodes. Each one of these is a pod running in Kubernetes. And the pods contain a CockroachDB uh, binary running and also a load generator. So uh, we have three. These are running on IBM's Blue Mix Cloud. Uh, they've been running for a little while. Uh, there's you know, some amount of data between them. We can actually look at uh, you know, how many queries are being run per second. There's about 400 um, reads and 400 writes per second that are running. Uh, and you know, the, one of the big things with Cloud Native is uh, elastic scalability, right, Alex? Right. So let's go ahead and just show how we can um, take this, uh, cl this cockroach cluster and scale it up. I'm going to just launch two more nodes on this. It's pretty much just uh, as easy as that. There's one. It's going. We'll just do the next one. Um, so again, this system is now going to scale horizontally both in throughput and availability. Great, so now we're running five Kubernetes pods. If we go back to the Cockroach administrative UI and look at the node list, we have five nodes here. So what Cockroach is now going to be doing, there were you know, 112, I think, replicas in each of those original three nodes. And uh, Cockroach splits up the key space into these smaller things called ranges, kind of like tablets in the, in the Google world. Uh, right now, it's rebalancing those across the now five nodes that are in the cluster. And that will happen over the course of the next uh, several minutes. 
Okay. So this thing should be survivable, though, too, is right? Right? That's right. Uh, and if the demo gods permit, <laughs> you can uh, use your itchy trigger finger here and choose a victim. <laughs> OK, I'm going to just go and kill a node. Let's make sure they're all online. They should show up here. Um, so we scaled it up. And now we're going to just nuke one of the instances. I'll just take this one. We'll go ahead and delete it. OK, should be dead. All right, so if we reload this Kubernetes. Ooh, oh, there's gone. only four now. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, now, if we look at Cockroach, it usually will take 10 seconds before it decides that a node is unresponsive. Here you can see there's a little orange dot instead of a green dot next to node 4 there. Um, the, the, the system's still running. Uh, it's still responsive. There'll, there'll be you know, some, a little glitch in performance as things have to uh, fail over on there. Um, and you can see there's a little glitch there. And some of the latencies have gone up. But the system is um, still going to be running. Uh, you can see here that the replicas per node uh, were kind of rebalancing down as there were five. So this uh, will just continue. OK. And I'll uh, bring that node back up just to heal the, heal the cluster here. Um, so this was node four again. We'll just launch that one. OK. So it should be back online as soon as that container launches. OK, it's running. Let's check running. to make sure things are healed. And it should take. Ah, yep. Yeah, okay. From orange back to green. So now that's going to continue rebalancing uh, and uh, you know come up to speed. You can see that the replicas have all sort of rebalanced. There's about 67 on each of them now. Okay, great. So we showed a SQL database that is both horizontally scalable and self-healing. So for many of you, that might be a first. But as promised, I wanted to make sure we showed something that had definitely never been seen before. And to do that, let's bring Mark back out. So welcome, Mark.